I was pumping gas, most definitely, and printing T-shirts and selling ink pens and, you know, I mean, every, every, any, anything and everything. There was a guy who I worked with many years ago, and we were talking about success and money and all that stuff. And um, he, he told me this one thing. He said, you know, money doesn't change anybody. Money reveals them, you know. Same thing with success. And uh, I, I, I believe that, you know, whole, wholeheartedly. I'm still exactly the guy that used to pump gas, you know. I'm still the guy that was a mechanic for a minute, you know. I'm still, exactly. I just happen to have a weird, weirder job at the moment. If we could celebrate every breath that we take, because nothing's a guarantee. If we could celebrate the breath and the exhale, which is being alive, without, you know, oh, my car won't start. There are things that are very, very important in life that we, we just, we don't think about, you know? And, the, and one of the most worrisome things that I, that I went through for years is you freaked, up, freaked out about your past, you're worried, you're scared to death of the future, but the now doesn't exist. And, and, I, and I think that's a grave mistake that we make. By the time you were 15, that you were already had lived in 20 different homes, is that true? Uh, my mom liked to move a lot. A lot. A lot? Yeah. One time we moved from one house to the house next door. So how do you adjust? How do you get to be, you know, every if you're going in a different school all the time? Well, it was kind of normal. For, we didn't know anything else, you mm -hmm. know? So for us, it was kind of normal. I moved to Los Angeles in 1983 mm -hmm. and uh, was a, basically an unemployed musician. Mm -hmm. And uh, a buddy of mine, Nicholas Cage, yeah. I was filling out job applications. And uh, Nick suggested that I meet his agent because he felt I should be an actor. Why? Don't know. Don't know. Still don't know. OK. <laughs> but no, so you'd never seriously thought about it until no. Nicholas Cage mentioned it. Yeah, I mean, and for me, it was really just, I, I just thought, well, I, you know, at this point, I'll do anything. I just got to pay the rent, you know. I was on the verge of being evicted. And... So you consider yourself lucky? Very lucky, yeah. But you have to have talent to meet the luck, right? Somebody hands you the ball, and you run, you know? I mean, and if you get hit, you get hit. Or, or, or maybe you make it through. Uh, you never know. But, I mean, I, I just know that somebody handed me the ball at a certain point, and I was hungry enough to keep running. Um, and I'm still running. I maintain a hunger, but not an ambition. You went to play music when you quit school. You didn't go to become an actor. I started playing the guitar at the age of 12. Yeah, it was the first real passion that I had. So I literally don't remember going through puberty I, I, because I locked myself in a room at the age of 12, 12, 13, and, and just played the guitar, I learned things off records, and taught myself how to play. And it was my life, and it was the only solace it was the only sanctuary, it was the only security. It was my first love. You have to realize that whatever your day is, whatever you're doing, whatever your job is, whatever people think of you or project you to be, none of it matters, uh, really, until you look around and see people who, who are in need. And um, I think the, probably the best benefit of my job is to help to make people smile who otherwise uh, wouldn't or couldn't have a smile on their face. So, um, yeah, that's my deal. To go into a place where, you know, I mean, I spent time in Great Ormond Street where, where it was, uh, I, w I was the parent uh, when my daughter was ill. And it was, uh, I mean, it was, the, I've known darkness in my life, but uh, that was the darkest period ever, you know. I'd always kind of done these visits, but after that, the visits became more and more important uh, because the kids, bless them, you know, they're so strong, they're so courageous, but the parents are the ones who are slowly dying. And to be able to bring a smile or a giggle um, to these people is, uh, it, it means everything in the world to me. You know? Do you look back and say, Look, I did what I wanted to do. It's defining of me. There were other things that I probably should have done. Not from my perspective. I mean, from my point of view, I did the right things. Every, every film that I've done, I'm happy that, that I made that choice. I don't have any regrets whatsoever. Most people would say that if you wanted to be a leading man in the traditional way, it was yours there for the taking, and you didn't want that. I think 
any actor, given a certain amount of success or given a certain amount, you know, you know somebody hands you the ball, you run with it. Any actor could do that. But I, it's not me. It wasn't me. I was on a television series for three or four years, about four seasons. And I was, without question, a product. Not my own product. That was somebody else's product. And they shoved me down the throats of America, and it was a very uncomfortable situation. And I swore to myself that when I got off that show, I would do what I wanted the way I wanted to do it. And I stick to that. So, I mean, I, if I had to do leading man things just to, just to continue to be an actor, continue to work, nah, I'd rather, I'd rather go back to pumping gas. What do you think when you look at those pictures? No, really. What, what do you think? No, it was a strange time because I'd become this product, and it made me very uncomfortable. Yeah, because I, I didn't, I mean, Being I Being sort of labeled a heartthrob. Well, they just, they just started to build this image, and it had nothing to do with me. And no one should accept anything but the truth. To have to suffer the ignorance of someone lying to you for some type of gain and... You've never seen any of your films, ever? I tried to see one once, because the director asked me to. I fell asleep 35 times. I feel the experience. I'm happy with the process, is what I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. The process of creating, the process of exploring, the process of breaking formula. Damaged characters are, are more interesting. Because but that's, that's what's great about, about the work Everybody's damaged. Everyone's damaged on some level. And I'm fascinated with human behavior. I'm, I'm fascinated with the flaws of the human being. I mean, I'm just fascinated. It's, it's a strange thing because the, the greatest thing you can do as an actor, I think, is to be a, an observer. And at a certain point, something bizarre happens. And you're not able to observe in public anymore because everyone is observing you. So that's a kind of danger. Since May 27th, when my daughter was born, I have been floating. I smile constantly, which I never did before. And you never imagined you would have it this kind of... No, you know, you, know, you, you can never... Everybody tells you, and you know, you know their experience, and you know it's going to be something, you know, sublime. But, you know, you just don't... You can't imagine until it actually happens when you, when you see... This little angel arrived. It's, uh, she's everything. The baby is everything. It's so amazing. My little family. It's just so. It's unbelievable. It's. Uh, I don't know. It's the only thing that's ever happened. Really, the only. Thing. Everything else is smoke. What were you worried when you turned fifty? No, you know, it. It was like. Uh, I mean, it was just a wake up. It's another day. You know, and. Everybody makes a deal about, you know, the idea of, oh, 50, you know, half a century and stuff like that. It felt like 40 to me. It just felt like another decade, really, you know. I mean, both grown-ups and kids love him so much. What is it about him, you think, that makes... Well, for one, I think he's a major talent. Two, he's awesomely good-looking. Three, he's, um, he's not like most people we know. There is something offbeat about him that is intriguing and ultimately attractive there's something magical about it. my kids call him uncle fun you know and uh he is when you are with him you are pretty certain that nobody else is having as good a time as you are i came here for for you the people to um through whatever good times or bad you know have stood by me trusted me and you've um thank you and you uh you have no idea how much i appreciate it i love you too